This video is about pancreatic pseudocyst and walled off pancreatic necrosis which is, a, which is a related condition. In this video we shall explore how they develop, what are the symptoms, the diagnosis and treatment of pseudocyst as well as treatment of walled off pancreatic necrosis. So let's look at the development first. This is a cartoon with the stomach, the bile tube and the pancreas at the back of the stomach. Different causes can set off pancreatitis which is activation of the pancreatic enzymes within the pancreas leading to inflammation of the pancreas gland. In consequence of the inflammation is that there is collection of peripancreatic fluid and when this pancreatic this peripancreatic fluid gets organized after four weeks and forms a wall around it made of scar tissue called granulation tissue with fluid within it this condition is then called a pseudocyst a walled off pancreatic necrosis is a pseudocyst with dead pancreas within its walls these are related but different entities now let's look into the symptoms pseudocyst may cause pain in the upper abdomen or dependent on their location to the left flank or back. This pain can at times be quite severe. They may cause obstruction by growing in towards the stomach or towards the bowel and causing the patient to vomit and not being able to retain their, their food and thus losing weight. Sometimes they may compress the bile tube and cause jaundice to arise. Blood vessels within the pancreas are prone to bleeding because the fluid may interact the wall of the blood vessels causing these to leak blood and the patient may suffer consequences as a result. Bacteria may find their way inside the pseudocyst causing sepsis and infection and turning the inside of a pseudocyst into a pus filled cavity. Pseudocysts may perforate allowing the effluent to come out of the pseudocyst and into the abdominal cavity with various consequences. So these are the general symptoms related to a pseudocyst. A walled off pancreatic necrosis may have a similar presentation with a difference that the dead pancreas within the cyst is prone to infection which can be a life threatening condition. So how do we diagnose this? The diagnosis is by means of scans. Simple ultrasound scan may diagnose a pseudocyst quite reliably in a thin patient. However, for most patients, in trying to locate the pseudocyst and to know about its size and any associated condition, a CT scan or an MRI scan is preferred. An endoscopic ultrasound is a flexible tube with an ultrasound scan attached at the tip that can take very close views of the pseudocyst. And if there is doubt about the type of the pancreatic cyst, then an ultrasound, an endoscopic ultrasound is deployed. This this would aspirate some of the fluid for assessment as well as at times taking a biopsy. The complications of endoscopic ultrasound include bleeding, pancreatitis and infection of a previously uninfected pseudocyst. So how do we treat pancreatic pseudocyst and wall of pancreatic necrosis? For a fair number of pseudocysts, no treatment is required if there are no symptoms. If there are no symptoms and the patient is fine, then these can be left well alone regardless of how big they might be. Once they become start causing symptoms such as pain or a complication, then the most effective way is to drain these pseudocysts. Now these pseudocysts can be drained externally where a small tube is inserted into the pseudocyst and this leads to the outside causing the fluid to leave the pseudocyst and thus collapse. This is not the preferred way of treating a pseudocyst except in exceptional circumstances because it causes the pseudocyst because of the disability of having to live with the drain and it may not be very effective as well as when the drain is removed the pseudocyst may become infected. Internal drainage is the preferred approach and what does that mean? That means opening up the pseudocyst towards the stomach and inserting a drain so that the pseudocyst may drain its affluent into the stomach and thus collapse and disappear. This can be done in the modern day with endoscopic ultrasound uh, which as I previously explained has an ultrasound tip to it and can carry out this procedure expeditiously. If an endoscopic, if an endoscopic ultrasound is not available or is not feasible then surgery might be performed. This could be minimally invasive or open. Surgery has the same aims as as described for the endoscopic treatment, the pseudocyst may be deroofed. A hole is made in the pseudocyst with a corresponding hole in the stomach, and these two are stitched together to allow the contents to dissipate into the stomach. What about a walled off pancreatic necrosis with dead pancreas inside? For these types of cysts, not only is the drainage of the cyst important, but mechanically, this dead pancreas need to be removed, otherwise, it's prone to infection and complications. This can be performed through the endoscopic route by inserting the endoscope, parking it next to the cyst making a big enough opening in the cyst to allow the insertion of the endoscope and then mechanically scooping the dead pancreas out. Sometimes it requires several attempts to be able to completely remove the dead pancreas. Surgery may be deployed which may be minimally invasive such as laparoscopic or robotic as well as open and the aims are exactly the same. At the end of the procedure the hole in the cyst is then stitched to a corresponding hole in the bowel or the stomach.
as depicted over here. It is important to reiterate that if this dead pancreas is left as it is and a WAPN, a world of pancreatic necrosis is treated as a pseudocyst, this will cause complications and will be prone to infections which is not easy to control. This completes the topic of pancreatic pseudocyst and world of pancreatic necrosis. I hope you found it of use. If there are any comments please do share.